everyone and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to take you through step by step of how I paint my watercolor floral arrangements, starting with picking out color palettes, color matching, color swatching, and then creating a floral arrangement. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so to start, we're just going to go through my materials. I have my Arches watercolor paper, my Windsor Newton Cotton watercolors, my Princeton snap brushes in a size 6 and size 12, my water, my paper towel, and we're ready to go. Okay, so today we're going to be doing some floral arrangements and we are going to be picking out color palettes, color matching, and color swatching. So I'm going to show you this handy dandy tool that I like to use. <laughs> it is called Pinterest. And I have a board that is just for color palettes, for color palettes and things that I like. There are so many ideas on here that you can get. And I use a lot of these for inspiration for my florals. So today we're just gonna pick a color palette. I kind of like this one for spring. So I'm gonna grab that one. And now I'm just gonna try my best to color match these color swatches. So I'm just gonna put this off to the side so I can see it. And I'm gonna try my best to color match. And it doesn't have to be exact. Um, but you want it around the same kind of ballpark if that's what you like. Okay, so I have my scrap piece of paper here. This is just cheap Canson paper. Um, I'm gonna wet up my brush and the first color I see is this dark kind of olivey green. So I'm just gonna grab some Hooker's Green Dark. Okay, and to darken greens, um, I love to use Dioxazine Purple. I love the color that it makes. And then this gives it kind of like a, a cool green-ish, yeah. <laughs> but I want to make it more of an olive, olive green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an undertone of orange, cadmium orange. Okay, and that will just make it more of an olive green. Okay, and you just keep adding different amounts to see which you like the best until you get that desired look that you like. Now, mixing colors comes with a lot of practice. So if you wanna do a whole sheet of mixing colors, go for it, okay? Take a whole day and mix colors because it, it's really a skill that you need to practice and learn. Um, I will probably get closer to these colors like in my first try than a new person to watercolor, but that's just, the amount that I've been doing it and how long I've been doing it. So first we have our first color swatch, which is a really nice kind of like olivey green, dark huntery olive green. I don't know. <laughs> there we go. And then the next green beside it in the color swatch is just a light version of that. So I just swiped off a bunch of the paint and dipped it in my water a bit. And now I'm just going to use a light color like that. And then there's like this grayish, kind of color. Now you can use Payne's gray, you can use like a light wash of black, but for this grayish color what I like to use is my, again, my mix of um, Hooker's Green, dark dioxazine purple, a bit more dioxazine purple, and it makes it this grayish color. And then I'm going to add a bit of this cobalt blue, and it makes this, this dusty grayish blue, but a really light wash of it, so I just swiped off a bunch of that paint. And that makes this really nice, dusty, light, grayish, blue-ish green thing. <laughs> okay. So there we go. So there I have my next color. I might even add a bit more blue to that. Just wanted a bit more on the blue side. Okay. And then we're going to go to the colors of the flowers. So I see um, a nice pink, a really nice light pink. So I'm going to use my permanent rose. I'm just going to do a really light wash of permanent rose. And that's how you'll get a nice pastel -y kind of pink. Okay, so that's one. And then the other color of the flower is going to be kind of like a nice peach. So I'm just going to add a bit of orange or yellow to that. And then it will just kind of make a really soft orange. Again, a light wash. And you have that really nice pastel kind of peach color. Okay, and then the last color is kind of like a cream color. Now for cream, I'm just going to turn it this way. I usually use a really light yellow mixed with a bit of brown. So maybe a little bit of yellow ochre because it's a, um, a yellowish brown. <laughs> uh, 
but I'm gonna mix whatever I have here. I'm gonna add a bit of burnt umber. And the trick to doing cream is making it just really, really, really light. So swiping off most of that color there. I don't know if you can see it on camera. But it will look kind of cream-ish on your paper, okay? And there is my color palette. So I'm gonna use this as a reference for my florals, okay? So I'm just gonna put it up here, make sure it's still in frame. All right, and we can start painting. Okay, so first I am going to start with um, the flowers. And I, for this little spring arrangement, I'm gonna do a peony, a rose, and maybe another smaller cream peony. And so, when you're putting together a flower arrangement, you want to think of the rule of thirds. Um, you don't want it to be exactly the same on both sides. You kind of want it asymmetrical. So I usually go for one big flower and then a medium size and then a smaller one. Um, I'm going to do the more in a line for this one, but you don't want it. It would just look awkward if it's one, two, three, four. Okay, you can do four flowers, but you want it like I said, asymmetrical. So maybe a big one here, medium one there, smaller one, and then a small one here. So let's just see where this goes. I'm gonna start off with my permanent rose, a really light wash of permanent rose here. And I'm gonna start off with a petal. And then I'm just going to make curves around that petal. Okay. And then a smaller curve here. And then I'm gonna go and make some messy lines at the top. And then some more small petal curves around the top. I do have more in-depth um, tutorials on how to paint these flowers exactly, so I can link that below too. Do a smaller petal down here, like it's starting to fall. Like so, okay? And now I'm just gonna take a bit more of the permanent rose, just a tad. And I think I might take a bit of um, hooker's green because I wanna mute that pink a bit. And I'm just going to add that darkness to the bottom of the petals here, okay? Just to get a bit of depth. And then the bottom of these petals over here. And make sure you do that while it's still wet. Like that, okay. Okay, and then I might add a bit of yellow ochre just to where I put that those center scribbly lines. Like that, okay? And now I'm going to do a peach rose. So I'm gonna grab my permanent rose, my cadmium yellow, not too, too much cadmium yellow. You want it more on the pinkier side. I'm gonna wash off a bunch of that. So I have a nice light wash. And I'm just gonna start off by drawing, by painting small curvy circles with the tip of my brush, really light pressure. So they're nice, fine, thin, lines like that and then you're going to do some c curves going around using that heavier pressure have it touch some of those lines but you want some of that um, white space in between the big curves and the small ones okay And then again, what I like to do is I like to go in with a bit more of a darker color and just add a bit of darkness while it's still wet like that. Adds a bit of depth. Okay, now I am going to do the cream colored flower and I'm just gonna do like a small kind of um, peony shaped flower here. Now, because this color is so light you might think that you can't really see it too much. I might need a bit more yellow. Um, but once it dries, you will be able to see it a bit better. So I'm just gonna do curved shapes and then those little lines with the tip of my brush. 
at the top, okay? Nothing too specific or fancy, just to show that there's another one there. And I think I might actually add another little bud here, so like a circular bud. Maybe another one here. They're like little peony buds. They're just circle circles, but they have some white space in them. Like that. And then I'm gonna go in with a bit more of that color, just tap towards the bottom. Maybe a bit at the top, just to add a bit of depth. Like that. Okay. And then I'm gonna take my green. We're gonna start doing some leaves while well, parts of this are still wet. So I'm gonna take that green that I made and I'm gonna connect it to the bottom of this peony bud and this one so it bleeds into it a little bit. And then I'm just gonna go over that part with some leaves. And then while this is still wet, I'm gonna have some leaves coming out over here too. leaves coming out on this side. And you're just going to start putting leaves where you find that there's some white space. Okay, so clearly there's a bunch here. We're going to put a bunch more there. But I want to kind of create this like shape that it's kind of going in a nice curved line. So I'm just going to bring some of these leaves down here. And then what I like to do with my leaves, I'm just gonna create a bit more of that color. My orange is so destroyed. <laughs> um, I like going back in to the stem and adding a bit more of the dark color right at the base of those leaves, just to create a bit of depth. It's like shading without shading. Okay, like that. And then you can just start putting them wherever you'd like. And we're gonna do another leaf shape too. So just leave some space for other leaves. Like that. And we're actually gonna use that dusty blue color for some berries, I think. So I'm gonna pick up some of that color that we used, and I'm just gonna start creating some little berry buds, just circular shapes, but not perfectly circular. Okay, you can have a bit up here if you like, wherever you want them. Then I'm going to grab a bit of my green and I'm just going to connect them all to a stem together with really light pressure so that line is nice and small. Like that, okay? Okay, and now we're going to um, <clears throat> add more leaves. I'm going to add different shapes of leaves. So I'm just going to grab more of this green color. And it's slightly different. And I'm going to start doing some longer leaves. So for longer leaves, what you have to do is you're just, I'm going to create the stem first. And then you're going to go off these stems. To make them longer, you just hold it down longer. So press down, longer, and then up. Okay, so it just makes the leaf a little bit longer. I might actually do these a little bit lighter. Okay, and then you can kind of curve it if you want, flick it in different directions. Okay. You're just dragging it out further. I'm just gonna put some darker green in the base of those ones too. Okay. 
like so. Okay, I'm gonna do some more on this side. And just fill in those leaves wherever you like. Like so. And then, if you really want to, I'm just gonna add a bit of darkness. Okay. And then if you really want to, you can also take your smaller brush and then start adding smaller versions of those leaves just to add a bit of, you know, contrast between the sizes. Just little fillers. You can do them lighter too. So again, a bit of light contrast between the light and the dark leaves. Like so. And there you go. Okay, so there is your first floral arrangement using these spring colors. Okay, so for our next one, we are going to do a different color palette. So let's take a look at our options here. And you can always do different ones too. Um, and it doesn't have to be exact. So I kind of like this earthy color, okay? This like kind of like mustardy yellow, this kind of like copper color, brown, um, a bit of rose, you know, the dark green and the gray. So I'm gonna start and create my own palette of that. So first let's start, I think for that yellow color, I'm gonna use yellow ochre on its own. And then for that kind of rusty brown color, I'm going to mix some red, some cadmium red deep and I want it a bit darker so I'm going to add a bit of dioxazine purple and then a bit of burnt umber to it and that's kind of a cool kind of rusty red it's a bit different than that's on the color palette there but I think I like this one you can even add a bit of cadmium orange to it if you wanted to. Yeah, to make it a bit more orangey. I'm gonna take our green, my trusty green one <laughs> that I always do. Dioxazine purple and hooker's green. Okay. Like that. Then I think I'm going to do a Payne's Gray. This one's Payne's Gray. I don't know if I'm going to go light or dark yet with it, but we'll see. Payne's Gray. And then maybe a light wash of this. We're going to keep this one a bit more simple. Okay, so there I have my color palette. And now we're going to start. Okay, so for this floral arrangement, I'm gonna do some anemone flowers. I'm gonna take some yellow ochre, and these are all gonna be the same flowers, just different perspectives of them. So I'm gonna do one that's like looking straight down at it. So I'm gonna start by doing some rough petals. We're gonna do five of these. here. Okay, so there we have the shape of our petals. It's kind of a light wash of 
this color. And I'm gonna take this red color that we made and I'm just going to tap where those petals meet in the middle. And I'm also going to tap just a bit of the edge. The edge of those petals on top. Like that, okay? Now I'm going to do another one, but I'm gonna do an anemone <laughs> facing the side. So I'm gonna have, actually, we're gonna go like this, okay. So I have one petal like this. I'm gonna have another petal coming out here. And then one that's gonna be behind this petal, but I don't want them to touch. So I'm just gonna leave some white space. Like that. And then I'm gonna have kind of like a half shape here. Okay. Like so. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my red color again, where they all meet in the middle, and then the tip of the flower, like so. Okay, and then I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna turn around this way. I'm just gonna do kind of like a bud or a little side view, like so. So just one petal and one like that, and then one petal kind of curving around this one. Like so. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab my red tips of the petals and where they all connect at the bottom like so and do a couple lines like that <clears throat> I think I might I feel like it looks a little awkward here I'm gonna do one petal that's kind of op starting to open okay get that red back There we go. Now I'm gonna start doing my leaves. So grabbing my green here. But I think, yeah, this time I might add, I think I'm gonna add a bit of that cadmium orange again. I kind of like that olivey color with this. Yeah, okay. And I'm just gonna start doing some leaves. I'm gonna make them a bit smaller, longer leaves like the other one. Kind of like that. There's a spot here. And actually, oh, I wanted to make some berries for this one too. So I'm going to take this red color. And because these um, are so light, I want to make these berries nice and dark, so it's a nice contrast, but I'm gonna make a bit more orange, burnt umber, red, and a bit of dioxazine purple. That was a lot of dioxazine purple, it's fine. I wanna make them nice and dark. Okay, so now you just gotta figure out where you wanna put the berries. I'm gonna have some berries coming out this way almost like budded buds of flowers, that kind of shape. Okay, and then some coming out this side. Okay, maybe a bit more. Now I don't want it too symmetrical, so I'm gonna have one more 
and the little berries coming out right here too. Okay, and it just balances it out even though it's asymmetrical. I don't know, it just works better that way in my mind. Okay, so now I'm just gonna draw the stem. I'm just gonna connect all those berries together like so. Like that. And then we can continue with the leaves. Okay, so I'm gonna have some coming from here. Okay, and you just continue to put them wherever you think they look best, okay? Okay, and now we're gonna wait for this to dry and then we're gonna do the center of these flowers and we're gonna add a bit of detail to the leaves. Okay, so now that it's all dry, we're gonna add the center to this and we're gonna start by doing, I think we're gonna add a Payne's Gray center. I want it nice and dark. So I have my Payne's Gray and I'm just gonna draw a circle, fill it in. And then I'm going to paint some little lines coming off of that circle, just with the tip of my brush using light pressure. Like so, and then the tip of those, I'm gonna do little dots. Okay, and then the same for this one, but because this one isn't fully open, it's more of a side where you see the long petals on this side and then the short ones here, if that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> you're gonna do kind of like a, a semicircle here. So it's half of the circle and then just come right in. Have those little lines facing like that. And then shorter on this side. And then do your little dots. Like so, okay? And now for the leaves, there's something I just started doing with my leaves that I, like it's a little stylized thing that I really like. Um, but I'm just gonna go and darken one side of each of the leaves. So I'm gonna go up the stem and darken one side of the leaf with a darker green, okay? Same color, just a bit darker. And it just kind of adds a bit of, I don't know, shadow to it, but it's just kind of cool to look at. Okay. It sharpens those leaves a bit. So up the stem and then half of the leaf. And it doesn't matter which half. You can switch it up if you like. Like that, and then down here. Okay, and there you go. Okay, so there you go. There are two flower arrangements. I really hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you guys learned a little bit of something about color mixing and matching. And yeah. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click that little bell icon to get notified every time I put out a new video and follow me on Instagram and Facebook for even more. Have a great day, guys. Bye.